what we're going to try and do this morning is discuss how we can make these issues more accessible. And I know I use the word sexy, but also sexier. How can we can make them more interesting? And also, uh, are they affordable? Is this something? And is there a way um, of making this very important topic achievable um, and bringing along the population uh, with the government's targets that it has uh, set? The thing about retrofitting or, or revisiting our existing housing stock is that it is fundamentally quite a difficult and dull and, um, and, and convoluted process. And I, I think there is not one way of making it exciting or appealing, but I think there are probably several. Um, and there are lots of ways in. I mean, and, and you know, it, it's partly about culture change and it's partly about uh, give, using it as a springboard for people to do other things, um, which we'll come on to. It's partly about government legislation, and it's partly about um, finding um, yourself in a position where maybe, you know, you're able to do something to your home that costs you nothing, and which affords you tremendous long-term uh, security of fuel and energy use. And I think that's, that's very important. Most people are living in houses where, frankly, you may as well have the heating on and leave the doors and windows wide open, because most of the heat's going out on the roof or the walls in any case. Um, and it just doesn't make sense, you know. Uh, I mean, putting aside this little little economic blip we're, we're experiencing at the moment, and in the future, the fuel prices are only going to go one way. You know, our, our homes are our biggest asset. It's the thing we spend most money on. It's the thing we're probably going to depend on most of us for our pensions and living on. You know, why don't we look after these things better? And if you can, frankly, halve or, 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 or reduce your energy bills by three quarters, why wouldn't you do it? There are very good reasons why you wouldn't do it because at the moment it's an awful lot of hassle and there's an awful lot of upfront cost and what we've got to do is find the things that will take both of those barriers away. So we and many others and many of our members have been chewing this one everything and how do we break out of that kind of mindset and, and what we've come up with is this idea that basically if you say well alright let's let people take out a loan right up front but let them pay it back over a much longer period of time, the same kind of period of time we pay back a mortgage, mortgage typically, so you spread it over 25 years but what you do is you, you calibrate the payback uh, out of the savings so that basically from day one you get all the benefits, all the thermal comfort and everything else. You get significantly reduced uh, energy bills and you pay back out of the savings. So you're better off from day one. The way you have to do that is you attach the loan to the house so that even when you sell your house, you simply sell it on with a standing charge. It's not a problem because you're offering somebody a much better home and much reduced energy bills and it simply gets paid back through your energy bill. And this is something that we've been talking to the government. It became very uh, prominent in the recent consultation they put out, the very sexily named heat and energy saving consultation, um, which, uh, to which I might add they are encouraging ordinary people like you and me uh, to respond to. In fact, they're desperately trying to talk to real people, uh, not just policy wonks like me, um, about what will make this stuff work. And I might add, we're actually videoing this session because we actually want to hear your ideas and comments and we'll give it to the government so they can hear what you think. So uh, do let, let us know. But, but that's basically how the idea works. It only takes two or three cultural influences, the workplace, local authority perhaps, the education system, um, for, and, and some peer pressure, for people to change, and change very quickly, and change radically. Um, and a good example is, you know, drink driving or wearing seatbelts, just how those two issues have in the space of 30 years changed from being entirely acceptable to mm. drink drive, for example, to being, you know, I mean, if you drink now and drive, you're, you're, you know, the son of the devil. So, so it'll become unacceptable not to have your loft insulated. I believe so, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 27% of our UK emissions come from our homes and, and as I say they're bleeding energy and, and carbon as we speak and, and the thing is what, what we've got to do is say well look let's, let's set up the incentives, let's make it easy for people, let's encourage people, let's show people it's common sense to do this but if they don't, and a lot of them will, but for those who don't in the end we have to make them do it. At the moment the government is engaging um, with the construction industry over retrofitting the one industry, the one profession who's remaining conspicuously silent is the architectural profession. And I believe that the only way we're going to get around this, if you want to make this thing, this stuff, this idea sexy, is to come up with some really exciting architectural solutions. So you don't think architects are doing enough? 
I don't think they're being asked to do enough, and I don't right. think it's something they, you know, put it this way, you know, architects earn money from fees, from designing, so yeah. I think uh, it would be appropriate to involve the design industry, yes. Otherwise, you know, if we're going to end up uh, just going to uh, building supplies, there are many here, um, and buying our insulation and just sticking it all over our walls, um, it's a little bit like asking a builder to design your house for you. you know, you're going to end up with something which is quite functional, but actually quite ugly at the same time. So the, the key here, I think, is making it, well, one key is making it is, is making it, uh, an aesthetically attractive proposition. And the final point is about the energy companies. Well, the, I, I mean, uh, obviously, I, I completely agree about the advice. Uh, I mean, the Green Building Council undertook a, a produced a report last year, which was a survey of. Uh, hundreds of organisations and, and individuals and said what are the barriers and, and, and really there were two big categories. One was cost and one was the hassle. Uh, and this lack of lack of clarity, this confusion, where do I go, where do I get advice, can I get a grant, can I not get a grant, how many different installers, can I trust them, all of that. Um, uh, the Energy Savings Trust, of course, are, are, are central to that. They, they, they are doing their best. The, 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 the advice they provide is, is getting better all the time. I do fundamentally question whether or not government is always the best agency to give us advice. Uh, and, and one of the things that uh, Green Building Council, again, has been doing is been talking to some potential new actors in this space. We've been talking to some of the high street supermarkets, for example, and saying, how about you providing this kind of advice to your customers? You're already selling loft insulation, you're selling green energy tariffs. Why not be a provider of advice as well? Maybe you can also be a front end for the kind of financing packages I've described and so on. So we do need that, and I think we, we need the trust and the accreditation uh, to give people confidence uh, to go with it. Uh, and as Kevin said, you know what we've got to do is we've got we've got a, we've got a, we've got a whole energy industry, um, uh, who uh, which is predicated upon selling as much power to as many people as possible. What we need is an energy sector which is about selling as little power to as many people as possible. It's about making a business out of energy services provision. This is not rocket science, and this is already the norm in in, in some other some other countries. You know, in some places. Um, uh, on the continent now, you know, energy companies rent people's roofs. And they say, can I put a solar uh, a panel on your roof, I will rent your roof, and you will be part of my generating capacity. You know, why don't we do that here? Well, we will have to do that here. The fundamental primary, primary objective of any sustainability strategy is to just reduce consumption. That's the first thing. I, I can't emphasize that strongly enough. But I would also add a fourth, which is monitoring, and it comes back to this point about people not knowing what they're consuming. And it, it, it's been established very clear that when people are given all kinds of little monitoring devices, and there are some on sale here at this show, um, to show the amount of energy you're consuming, your electrics, your fridge, your, your, your sockets, um, once you can see it, people can begin to regulate it and control it, and their consumption goes down. And the final point I wanted to make, which is a very interesting point you're making about uh, communities. Uh, in this case, a CHP unit, but I believe, um, I'm interested in the idea, the longer term idea, that um, uh, if, if, uh, if a street wants to deal <coughs> with how they might retrofit, or a small community might be interested in, in a suburb, um, they might even collectively employ an architect, uh, employ some consultants, and devise a collective strategy and work as a community to deliver a solution that's right for them. So I'm, I'm quite interested in that. Community action, the kind of thing that you're exactly doing with your CHP. It's not going to be the number one reason you buy a house. You're still, it's still location is key and all of that. But now, you know, you, 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 you print off your detail from the internet if you're thinking of buying a new house and you get that energy label and you look at it and you think, hmm, okay, what's that going to mean for my energy bills? So that's going to creep into people's consciousness. It is going to help if you've then got the right kind of drivers in terms of the right kind of government incentives, if you've got uh, uh, you know, things that are going to take the hassle out, if you've got certification of accredited installers. And, and so if a guy is going to drive up in a white van and come and do all sorts of things to my house, can I trust the guy if I've got any comeback? Um, if I've got a, a finance mechanism that says you can pay up front, it's paid back over the course of 25 years, I'm going to be better off from day one. Why wouldn't you do this? And over time, as I say, you can ratchet up the standard, as we've done on so many other things, whether it's drink driving or you name it. Now I'd like to uh, thank Kevin McLeod and Paul King, both my guests, for a really fascinating talk.